from the Gospel of Mark. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Later this morning, people will be walking and marching down Bedford Road in what is known in Pleasantville as the Ragamuffin Parade. There'll be children, and there'll be youth, and there'll be a band. It will be a scene. It will be a celebration. Pretty adorable to watch go by. It's not like this scene in Jericho. And yet, with the level of the crowd and the noise and the excitement, because Jesus of Nazareth came by, and maybe today is the perfect day to try to picture what it is like to be on the roadside with Bartimaeus, the blind beggar. Imagine that we are in the scene with Bartimaeus, that we too are sitting on the roadside as Jesus comes by. Would we call out to him? Would we raise our voice in the midst of the crowd to speak up, asking for Jesus to see us? If we think we would stay silent, do we know why? Is it because we do not want to draw attention to ourselves? Or do we think that the healing we need is not worthy of Jesus' attention? What if we let that go, at least for a moment, and imagine that we did indeed call out? And as much as it irritated the bystanders, Jesus was not irritated with us at all. He called out to have us come to him. When that happens for Bartimaeus, he throws off his cloak and he goes to Jesus. He leaves behind what has been a part of his wardrobe up to now with the abandon of someone who does not want anything to hold him back. If Jesus called us to go to him, what would we need to throw off in order to put our real selves in the moment with Jesus? the genuine person inside us who needs healing, but we are hiding behind a mask. What would that person need to throw off so that we too would not miss the moment with Jesus? Maybe it's the expectations of some part of our world that is weighing down our shoulders like a heavy cloak. We live in a time and place where expectations can be so heavy to carry especially when we subscribe to the idea that we are individuals and don't belong to anything bigger than ourselves. Maybe it's the rules that we learned about never being vulnerable. Never let them see you sweat. Never let them see you cry. Those are lines that many of us grew up with that have gotten stuck in our heads in some really unhealthy ways. Maybe it's the responsibilities that we've taken on that have become overwhelming, that get in the way of making space for the spiritual part of our being. 
to even make itself heard. This day, what is the cloak you need to cast off so that you can come to Jesus? Maybe it is the cloak of hopelessness that is weighing us down. We see so many acts of violence, horrific, in this world this week, in bombs, in bullets. It's hard to hope. Bartimaeus comes to Jesus, and Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? It seems like a simple question for Bartimaeus to answer. He's blind, and he wants to see. Notice that he doesn't just say, I don't want to be blind anymore. He says he wants to see. He imagines the positive, not just a request to end the negative. What would we say if we met Jesus on Bedford Road today, and he asked us, what do you want me to do for you? Maybe we aren't exactly sure what we would say. We might have gotten so good at hiding the brokenness in us that this is a hard question. We hide our need for healing even from ourselves. We are okay. We are all right. We have it all together. But then the things that are hurting us come out in illness and in stress and in addiction And we find ourselves in crisis. That's when we know the truth that we need healing. It could be that we are struggling with questions like, I have everything I ever wanted. How come I still feel empty? Maybe what we don't even know we need from Jesus is to be filled up to see the why of life more clearly, to be rooted in his love, to know that we are a child of God. If your marriage is in trouble, you can ask Jesus to heal that pain and help you envision a different way. You can remember the love that you shared at the beginning, How would it be if the person you share your life with is your partner, your best friend? See that and ask Jesus to help you see that in each other. If you are overwhelmed and tired and you are not sure why, you can ask Jesus to help you seek what you could change to live a life with energy and strength. You could ask Jesus to give you what you need to be as healthy as you can be at this moment in your life, to open your eyes so that you might see. If you are brokenhearted about the hatred that seems to be everywhere, bring that brokenhearted hopelessness to Jesus. Ask him to show you what hope could look like. Friends, we were created by a loving creator. We believe that winning the game of life is not just about some outward measure of success. We believe in love and compassion expressed in the light of Christ and the seeds that we sow of faith as we serve on behalf of Jesus. We were created to connect with other people who are seeking to serve and praise God too. When we are in spiritual crisis, this is our place, and worship is our home. In this room today, we have long-term history and current history, love, servanthood. We have a child who is beginning his journey of faith. Parents who are committing themselves to nurture this child in faith. We have a room full of people who have promised to be with you every step of the way. We have children who are growing in their faith, 
receiving their first Bible from this church, we are surrounded by a crowd of great witnesses who planted their lives of faith here in such a way that we are still bearing fruit today. Most of all, we have the Spirit of Jesus. He is with us. He is inviting us into relationship with him, and he hears us calling out, even if we aren't making any noise. Jesus is calling out to us, asking us to pray for, to ask for what we really need, not what we think we're supposed to need, but embracing a vision for what could be. Now we know that when we pray, the answers we get might be subtle. The first step is allowing our real spiritual need to bubble up to the surface, to make space so that we can be present in our relationship to Jesus and pay attention to what we see and what we hear. It is possible that our healing and our need to hear from the Lord, that the answers we are seeking, they are right here, waiting for us to answer Jesus' question, what do you need me to do for you? I think today... We needed to see a celebration. We needed to see hope. We need to see a child moving and loving water and jumping into baptism. We needed to see what God brought us here together to see. May we open ourselves to be God's children and to know that we can come to Jesus to tell him, what it is we need him to do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.